Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Holy Redeemer Church as we begin the holiest week of the church year, celebrating Palm Sunday of the Lord's Passion. When you came into church today, in addition to the worship aid, you should have received a copy of a new resource we will use this year that has the entire narrative of the Passion. Included in the Passion are several parts for the assembly to read that are labeled Chorus. This year's Passion begins on page 13, and this is also noted in the worship aid when we get to that part of the liturgy. We will also be using these same booklets for the Passion on Good Friday. There will be two priests here for confessions tomorrow night, beginning at 545 and lasting until the 7 p.m. Mass begins. We ask that you please take note of the special liturgy times for the Paschal Triduum, beginning on Holy Thursday especially noting that the Easter Vigil this year will be celebrated at St. Augustine and St. John the Baptist, both beginning at 8.45 p.m. Our Easter Sunday Masses here at Holy Redeemer will be at 7.30, 9, and 11 a.m. All of the Triduum liturgies and times are in this weekend's worship aid as well as the Sunday Bulletin. Our presider this morning is Father Ken Schnipke. We begin today's liturgy by singing a hymn, and then if you would turn and face the back for the blessing of palms. Please stand. begin our celebration of Holy Week this day in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today, we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ, the King in exaltation, may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him, lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately on entering it, you will find a colt tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone should say to you, why are you doing this? Reply, the master has need of it and will send it back here at once. So they went off and found a colt tethered at a gate outside on the street and they untied it. Some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They answered them just as Jesus had told them to and they permitted them to do it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and put their cloaks over it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. Those preceding him as well as those following kept crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Hosanna in the highest. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us go forth in peace.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who is an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we who heed his lesson of patient suffering so merit to share in his resurrection. Who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who cluck my beard, my face I did not shield from buffet and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness. And found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Please be seated for the reading of the Passion. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priest and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, When he was in Bethany, reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you, and whatever you wish, you can do good to them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priest to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you, carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Whatever, wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off entered the city and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and say to him one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, 
the one who dips with me into the dish. For the Son of Man indeed goes, as is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will do not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs, who has come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, the man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day, I was with you in the teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man following followed him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priest and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. 
Again the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power, and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer court. Then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to essay to the bystanders. Once again, he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more, <laughs> He began to curse and to swear, I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priest with the elders and scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply. You say so. The chief priest accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of? Jesus gave no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release you to the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated, place of the skull. They gave him wine, drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for, th for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. With him they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Likewise, the chief priest with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He 
Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave out a loud cry and breathed his last. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of the younger James and of Joses, and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having bought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joses, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Over the years, a celebration this weekend has acquired at least two names. Sometimes it's referred to as Palm Sunday, and other times it has been called Passion Sunday. We began with the blessing of palms, palms which remind us of Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem as a king. Since then, our focus has turned toward the passion of Jesus. Our first reading, known as the Suffering Servant Psalm, reminds us that suffering is a part of true Christian living. Then in the second reading, St. Paul reminds us that we need to empty ourselves, humble ourselves, and bend our knee before the Lord our God. Then finally, in the Passion reading, we walk with Jesus to Calvary, where he suffered and died for us. This celebration could leave us feeling rather somber, and only able to see the passion and suffering of Jesus. Yet there's so much more to this celebration and this week ahead. It's not just about the what, what Jesus suffered, but the why, that he endured his suffering and death out of love for us. The celebrations this week ahead ritualize that love and make it real for us. On Holy Thursday, 
we gather to celebrate the gift of the Eucharist, the Last Supper, which Jesus gave his very body and his blood. He washed the feet of his disciples as a reminder that we too are called to wash the feet of one another, to serve one another. We also recall the sense of betrayal that Jesus felt from Judas and the agony that he went through in the garden. On Good Friday, we gather before the cross. Remember the torture he endured, the cross he was given to carry, and the cross upon which he gave his life out of love for us. Then finally on Easter, we realize the power of God's love, which rises even from death, the power of the risen Lord to transform our world and our lives. These services, they are unparalleled in the church year, and ones which truly connect us with the richness of our faith. I hope that you'll take time to be part of these powerful times of worship and prayer. As we gather to celebrate this Passion Palm Sunday and walk with Jesus in the week ahead, there are three essential points for us to remember and reflect upon. First, Jesus wanted his death to be a sign. He wanted to say in a very dramatic way what he told his disciples in his life. There is no greater love than lay down one's life for one's friends. Second, Jesus wanted his death to be an invitation. He wanted to invite us to do what he told his disciples to do. Love one another as I have loved you. Be willing to give of ourselves for others. And third, Jesus wanted his death to be a revelation. He wanted to remind us, as he told his disciples, that love involves suffering. Whoever wishes to come after me must deny his very self, take up his cross, and follow me. The passion and crucifixion of Jesus is a sign of Jesus' love for us. It's an invitation or a call to love as Jesus did. And it's a revelation that true love can hurt. The question for us to reflect upon this day and this week as am I and you willing to love the love that Jesus shared with us? Gathered in faith, we now profess together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into heaven. The third day he rose again. He descended into heaven. And is seated at the right hand of the Father. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead, and to believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. From the cross, the Lord promised salvation. Let us pray for all need of the Lord's words of comfort and healing that the church's celebration of the Paschal Mystery will deepen our faith and lead us to be unafraid to share the good news of salvation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of nations will seek nonviolent ways 
to settle, in, settle differences, especially in the lands of the Middle East, where our Lord suffered his passion and death. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. That those who suffer from the devastating effects of storms and natural disasters will see relief through the generosity and efforts of others. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. That all who will be welcomed into the church this Easter through the sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist will be strengthened by God and deepen their desire for his presence in the Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick will know the healing power emanating from the cross of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died, especially the deceased members of the Vosco and Ziegenbusch families, Rita Heitkamp, Zach Hemmelgarn, Keegan Freitag, Linda Lochtefeld, and Norman Hoyne will be with Jesus in paradise and experience God's unconditional love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church will be filled with vocations to the priesthood, the diaconate, and religious and married life. Together we now pray. Almighty Father, you have created us for some I now invite the children to come forward for the children's offertory. Again, a reminder that all of us are called to share the gifts of our time, talent, and treasure with the Lord with one another.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. For our good, good of all, his holy church. Amen. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by the sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the of the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty in our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather people to yourself, so from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and gave you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and gave you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured up for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, 
as we celebrate the memorial the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis, our Pope, Dennis, our Bishop, the order of bishops, the clergy, the religious, and deacons, and your entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you, and your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleased unto you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, and bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourished by these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you may have brought us to hope, but through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe. So by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow for the blessing. Lord, we pray. Look, O oh Lord, we pray on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And may mighty God bless you all, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.